Parabolic Antenna Design Using HFSS The outline of this tutorial is Historical Development Applications and Future Trends Fundamentals of Parabolic Antenna Operation ANSYS HFSS Tutorial, Prime Focus Parabolic Antenna ANSYS HFSS Tutorial, Cast Grain Parabolic Antenna Let's take a quick journey through the history of parabolic antennas. It all began in the 1880s with Heinrich Hertz, the scientist known for proving the existence of electromagnetic waves. Hertz used a parabolic antenna in his experiments, marking the early stages of this technology. Fast forward to the early 20th century, and we have Sir Charles Parsons. He saw the potential of parabolic antennas for radio communication, expanding their use beyond just experiments to practical applications. Then came World War II. Parabolic antennas were widely adopted during this period, particularly for radar technology. Their ability to focus signals made them perfect for detecting aircraft and other objects, which was crucial for military operations. Today, parabolic antennas are a standard piece of technology in telecommunications. We see them everywhere, from satellite dishes in our backyards to massive radio telescopes used in deep space communication. They've come a long way and remain an essential tool in our modern world. Now, let's look at some real-world applications of parabolic antennas and see where they're used in our daily lives and beyond. First up is satellite communication. Parabolic antennas are perfect for both sending data up to satellites, what we call uplink, and receiving data back down, or downlink. This technology is what allows us to have satellite TV, internet, and even global positioning systems, or GPS. Another fascinating application is in radio telescopes. These are essentially huge parabolic antennas that astronomers use to observe distant objects in space, like stars, galaxies, and even black holes. Thanks to their high gain and ability to focus on specific areas, they're ideal for capturing faint signals from far away in the universe. And lastly, we have radar systems. Here, parabolic antennas play a crucial role in detecting objects and measuring their speed and distance. They're widely used in aviation to track planes, in weather forecasting to monitor storms, and in many other fields that require precise object detection. So, from space to our planet's surface, parabolic antennas are everywhere, enabling communication, exploration, and detection. Fundamentals of parabolic antenna operation Parabolic shape, the red curve in the diagram represents a parabolic reflector. The shape of this reflector is defined by the equation y2 is equal to 4x, where f is the focal length. This shape is crucial because it has a unique property. Any parallel rays, like those coming from a distant source, that hit the parabola will reflect toward a single point, known as the focus. Parallel rays and reflection. The blue lines show parallel rays approaching the parabolic reflector. These rays could represent electromagnetic waves, such as radio waves or microwaves, coming from a distant source. When these parallel rays hit the surface of the parabola, they are reflected towards the focal point due to the parabolic shape. Focal point, in the diagram, the focal point is marked in red. All rays that hit the parabolic reflector converge at this point after reflection. This point is where the feed antenna, often a horn or dipole, is placed. The feed antenna is responsible for collecting these focused signals and converting them into electrical signals for further processing. Gain and beam width. Parabolic antennas are used to concentrate signals into a narrow beam, which enhances the antenna's gain. The larger the reflector, the more focused the beam, and the higher the gain. This makes parabolic antennas ideal for long-distance communication where high gain, directional signals are required. The image provided in the slide now shows a cast grain antenna setup, which is a variation of the parabolic antenna that includes a secondary reflector. The main red parabolic reflector serves as the primary reflecting surface, similar to a standard parabolic antenna. Its purpose is to focus the incoming or outgoing electromagnetic waves. Convex secondary reflector, a smaller, convex reflector, shown in red in the center, is placed between the main reflector and the feed. The secondary reflector redirects the signals that are either being transmitted from or reflected back to the primary parabolic reflector. This convex shape is chosen to expand the beam before it reflects to the focus at the feed, allowing for a more compact design. Feed and signal path. In this setup, the feed, often represented by the green arrow, is located at the back of the primary reflector, rather than at its focal point. 
incoming parallel rays, such as from a distant source, first hit the primary reflector. They are then directed toward the secondary reflector, which further reflects the rays back toward the feet at the back. The secondary reflector modifies the path of the rays, redirecting them toward the focus point at the feed, where they converge. Advantages The cast grain setup allows the feed to be placed at the back of the antenna, making it easier to install and maintain. It reduces the feed blockage that typically occurs in standard parabolic design since the feed does not obstruct the main aperture. This configuration is often used in applications that require high gain and compactness, such as satellite communication and radio telescopes. In this slide, an offset feed parabolic antenna is demonstrated. The main reflecting surface is a segment of a larger parabolic reflector, represented by the red curve. Unlike a full parabolic reflector, which has the feed positioned at the focal point in the center, the offset feed design uses a portion of the parabola, so the focus is off to the side. Offset feed placement, the feed, indicated by the green arrow, is located to the side of the main reflector, away from the central axis. Incoming parallel rays strike the parabolic reflector, which focuses them towards the offset feed. This placement prevents the feed from obstructing the main reflector, allowing the entire surface area to be used for signal reflection and improving efficiency. Advantages of offset design, reduced blockage, because the feed and support structures are positioned off to the side, they do not block any part of the reflecting surface. This leads to a clearer, more effective path for signal reflection. Improved efficiency, with no blockage, the entire aperture of the reflector is available for signal reflection, which increases the antenna's overall gain and performance. Lower side lobes, offset feed antennas tend to have lower side lobes compared to centrally fed parabolic antennas, which can reduce interference from unwanted signals. In this slide, a Gregorian parabolic antenna is depicted. The main parabolic reflector, in red, functions similarly to that of a standard parabolic antenna, focusing incoming rays toward a focal point. It has a large aperture that captures parallel rays from a distant source and reflects them toward the secondary reflector. Concave secondary reflector, in a Gregorian antenna, the secondary reflector is concave, as shown in red within the blue outline, and is positioned behind the primary focal point. When rays reflect off the primary reflector, they converge toward the secondary reflector. The concave shape of the secondary reflector further refocuses these rays toward the final focal point where the feed, indicated by the green arrow, is located. This secondary reflector effectively bends the signal back to a more compact location near the primary reflector. Feed location, the feed is positioned on the opposite side of the primary reflector, close to where the reflected rays converge after interacting with the secondary reflector. This positioning allows the feed and its associated components to be mounted in a more accessible and protected area, behind the primary reflector. Advantages of the Gregorian design, compact design, by using a concave secondary reflector, the Gregorian design can fold the optical path, making the antenna more compact than other designs. Reduced feed blockage, the feed is positioned away from the main reflector's aperture, which minimizes any interference and blockage from the feed structure. Enhanced gain and focus, the double reflection through the primary and secondary reflectors allows for precise focusing, resulting in high gain and improved performance for long-distance communication. Summary of comparisons. Standard parabolic antenna offers simplicity but may experience significant feed blockage. Cast grain antenna uses a secondary convex reflector to reduce feed blockage and provide a more compact design. Offset feed antenna eliminates feed blockage entirely by placing the feed off to the side, providing a clear aperture and efficient signal collection. Gregorian antenna, uses a concave secondary reflector for a compact, highly precise design with minimal interference, suitable for specialized applications. Now that we've explored the fundamentals of parabolic antennas, their history, operation, and real-world applications, it's time to dive into something hands-on. In the next section, I'll guide you through creating and analyzing antenna designs using HFSS, a powerful simulation tool for electromagnetic structures. Let's get started with the HFSS tutorial and see how we can apply these concepts in a practical way. First, click on the New button and then select HFSS from the top menu in the HFSS software.
Next, we'll select the Equation Based Curve option. This is where we input the values for x, y, z, start underscore t, and end underscore t, as shown in the video. By entering these values, we can accurately create the parabolic curve based on the antenna's diameter and focal point. Now, an important factor to keep in mind here is the focal point to diameter ratio, or FOD. This ratio, which we'll refer to as FOD, plays a crucial role in shaping the parabolic curve. A higher FOD results in a shallower, less deep dish, while a lower FOD, like 0.2, creates a deeper dish. Deep dish antennas are often used for applications where interference rejection is critical. For this tutorial, we're going to select a relatively flat dish with an FOD of 0.3, which gives us a balanced shape and is ideal for general purpose applications. Then, click on Sweep Around Axis. In the window that opens, we'll choose the Y axis for rotation. This will rotate our curve around the Y axis, creating a 3D parabolic dish shape. Once that's done, we'll have the basic geometry of our parabolic antenna. Next, we assign PEC boundary condition to the parabolic surface. Next, we'll set up a relative coordinate system for placing the horn feed accurately. This allows us to position the feed exactly where it needs to be in relation to the parabolic dish.
After that, we'll use the HFSS components library to insert a conical horn antenna. This horn will act as our feed, directing signals to and from the parabolic reflector for optimal performance. Now, we'll set up the analysis parameters, define a frequency sweep for the range we're interested in, and establish a radiation boundary around the antenna. These settings prepare us for a full wave simulation, allowing us to accurately analyze the performance of the parabolic antenna. To finish, let's click on validation check. This step ensures that all our setups are correct and ready for simulation. Once everything checks out, we can go to the HFSS menu and select Analyze All to start the full wave simulation. This will give us detailed insights into the antenna's performance based on our design. With the simulation complete, we can now visualize the results. Let's go to results, then create far fields report, and select 3D polar plot to generate the far field radiation pattern. This will show us how the antenna directs energy in space. We can also choose rectangular plot to view gain over frequency. This plot will help us see how the antenna's gain varies across our frequency range, as demonstrated in the video. These visualizations are key to understanding the antenna's performance in different conditions.
To optimize our parabolic antennas performance, we'll set up a parametric sweep for the focal point to diameter ratio, or FOD, around 0.3. This sweep allows us to analyze how small changes in FOD affect the antenna's shape and performance. After running the sweep, we can evaluate the results to find the best FOD value. As demonstrated in the video, the optimal value for this design is 0.323, which gives us the ideal parabolic curve for our intended application. Let's proceed with this configuration to ensure the best performance.
To improve our antenna's performance, we're going to start by designing a cast grain configuration. This setup includes both a primary parabolic reflector and a secondary subreflector, which will allow us to enhance the focus and gain of the antenna. To begin, let's duplicate our existing parabolic antenna design. This step ensures we preserve the original results and can easily switch back if needed. With the duplicated design, we'll then establish relative coordinate systems for accurate placement of the feed and subreflector. Proper positioning of these components is essential for aligning the subreflector with the primary reflector, which is key to optimizing the antenna's performance in this cast grain setup.
Next, we'll focus on optimizing the subreflector to achieve maximum gain for our cast grain antenna. We'll start with the initial setup values shown in the video, which serve as our baseline. Then, we'll explore a range of adjustments, identifying the boundaries for each variable involved in the optimization process. Through a series of trial and error simulations, we can narrow down the best configurations. This iterative approach lets us refine the subreflector's position and curvature to find the ideal setup. With these adjustments, we'll see a significant boost in performance, resulting in an antenna design that delivers much higher gain.
As we look at the results, it's clear that this optimized cask grain design performs significantly better than our original setup. The adjustments to the subreflector's positioning and dimensions have led to a noticeable increase in gain, confirming that the optimization process was successful. This improvement demonstrates how fine-tuning key parameters in a cask grain configuration can greatly enhance antenna performance, making it more efficient for demanding applications. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial on cast grain antenna design and optimization informative and helpful. If you enjoyed the content and want to see more tutorials like this, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Your support really helps us keep creating valuable content for you. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.